Hey, what's up guys? Jake Verden Tech here, back with another video. And today we are picking up where we left off on the Encase M1 server rebuild. So in the previous video, we installed the Ubuntu server 20.04 operating system and did some configuration stuff. So we do have our server up and running. But in this video, we're going to install the cockpit service, which is the SSH client where you can access your server and manage it through a web browser with a nice graphical user interface. And we're also going to install the GNOME desktop environment. So I've also really liked having a desktop environment on our Ubuntu server. It just really gives us a good idea of what's going on on the server, whether we do it remotely through cockpit, um, the SSH in the terminal, or actually on the system itself, having that desktop environment, making sure our files are making it to the right place and we can actually view our files from the server. Alrighty guys, with all that being said, let's get started. I'll have all the commands throughout the video, but I'll also try to post them in the comment section below so you guys can just copy and paste them if you're doing the same thing and SSH into your server to make it a little bit easier. Um, if you guys want to see how to install Ubuntu Server 20.04, you can watch my previous video, which I'll try and put a card in the end or somewhere around here for you guys to check out. Alrighty, let's hop on the desktop and we'll get started. So now we're back on the desktop, we're going to try SSHing into our newly created server. So I got my command prompt open on my Windows machine. So I'm just going to go ahead and go SSH, type in our user, and then at the IP address. Now it's going to ask the password for JVT admin, and we're in. So right now we are in the terminal for our Ubuntu server. So you can see it's got our user, JVT admin, and it is at the JVT NAS, which is our server name. So cool. So now this is where you can remotely manage your server inside the command line or terminal of other systems. So this is pretty cool. So you don't have to always be have a mouse and keyboard connected to your server and stuff like that. You can just access it this way. But now we are actually gonna install a couple more things. We're gonna install the GNOME desktop interface and we're gonna install Cockpit. This is usually a very simple install. It's just a quick command. So we'll go ahead and try the command on Cockpit's website, which is sudo apt-get install Cockpit. Okay, it looks like it's working now. Okay, it appears like that install went through, so I'm going to say system control start cockpit. So basically what this command is, is that we installed the cockpit service slash application, and now we want to start that service. So we're going to say system abbreviated control start cockpit and then I'll press enter help if I spelled it right so uh, there's no R so system CTL start cockpit this should do it and it looks correct we have our credentials authentication complete okay so that should have started our cockpit service and it's very easy to test that so I'm going to open up a web browser. If we open up a browser, https colon forward slash, you're going to type in your IP address and then you're going to do colon and the port for this service, which ports on a server setup like this are basically ways you can access the server and then different services and applications you have on that server. So in this case, we have the IP address for our server and then we want to access the cockpit service. So I believe it's going to be 9090. Yep, this looks correct. Then you'll go to advanced, proceed, and this is the login screen for your newly created server. So like I said, cockpit is a open SSH client. So this is a way we can SSH into our server via the web browser and it gives us a really nice interface and a lot of the controls are 
really nicely presented in this visual, opposed to doing everything from the command line. But we're gonna log into this and I'll kind of show you around real quick. And when you log into Cockpit, you're gonna use your same credentials that you use when you set up your server. So in when you log into your server via the terminal. So in my case, it's JVT admin. And here we are. This is the JVT NAS, that's the name of my server. And like I said, it is a really nice clean interface. And there's actually a lot you can do with this, which I really like. I really like this service. I've used it at work quite a bit when building NVR storage systems. And it works really well. So this is the host dashboard. Um, I think under health, it will have like updates and stuff. Right now it'll say your usage, so you can go into that a little bit more. It'll tell you your CPU usage, uh, memory usage, uh, disk usage, network traffic, all sorts of stuff. So this is kind of the home host page. You can edit all sorts of stuff too. So if you want to change the host name, I can change my name from JVT NAS to something else. And I have tested a lot of this stuff. It manages everything really well. You can go to logs and it'll give you a pretty much what, what's going on with the server. If something failed or if a service was started, it'll give you all that. Or in this case, you can see where we rebooted. Storage, we're really going to focus on in the next video when we configure our RAID because I've had great success configuring the RAID configuration through cockpit. But right now, we only see our boot drive, which is the 250 gig NVMe. So we can get some details on that if we click that. You can also manage partitions on this. It's really cool. There's a lot you can do with this. When we have more devices, we can create a RAID through here and that's how we'll do that. We have a networking tab, which just has more network related stuff, obviously. There's our ethernet, our IP address, stuff like that. And accounts, this is where you can manage the accounts, which is really cool. So you can see this is my JVT admin account. I can change the password if I want, uh, change the name. But as you can see, it picks up everything you put in from the install of Ubuntu server, which is really cool. And then you have the root account. And then you can create new accounts too, which is pretty neat if you want to let somebody else log in. Services, this is where all of your services are active so we can view the actual cockpit service itself and all the files that are related to it and you can see most of them are active so if you install more services on top of uh, this install of Ubuntu server they'll show up in here applications it comes stock with the storage management which is really nice so I usually just leave that alone and I haven't checked out the other applications that can be installed on top of cockpit. So we have updates and this is probably the other thing I use mostly instead of accessing the terminal through your command line on your actual operating system of a desktop or laptop, whatever you want to SSH into, you can log into cockpit through the web browser on any device and then it does have a terminal already logged in which is really nice so it makes it nice and easy lastly this other tab here dashboard this is just something you can quickly look at the status of your system that's pretty much it as far as cockpit goes like I said we'll be using it in the next video quite a bit when we configure our raid so I just wanted to give you guys a quick rundown as this is a really cool service and I definitely recommend it um, even on Ubuntu server, but there are uh, other distros that it's available for. So next we are actually going to start installing the GNOME desktop interface for the actual server itself. So even though we have a GUI we're accessing right now through Cockpit, I like to have the GNOME desktop environment just so I can view some other things a little bit easier than going through the command line always. So we're going to go ahead and do that and we're actually going to install it through cockpit. So we can go to our terminal and we can do our install through here. So this can be 
you can install this either on the actual system itself you can remote in through the command line like we did earlier but in this case we're already in cockpit so i'm just going to do it through the cockpits terminal so to install the desktop we're going to install the gnome desktop interface which is really common with ubuntu so first thing i'm going to do is sudo apt install task cell so it's installing that and I believe this is a menu where we can install some things on top of Ubuntu server and this is going to give us the full desktop interface you can install like a vanilla version but we're going to go ahead and do this now I'm going to go sudo task so install Ubuntu desktop. So this might take a bit because it's installing the full desktop environment onto your server. Now as far as performance goes, a lot of people, if they want to keep it super lightweight, they don't install any sort of desktop environment to have that running in the background. But on a lot of systems I've ran, even like older AMD FX processors, stuff like that, and stuff that's not super powerful, it's ran just fine. It's been pretty smooth, so I've had okay luck with it. I haven't had it tax the system too bad and in our case right now we're running the i5 8600k which should have plenty of cores and threads to run this without a problem. Alrighty guys, the install is complete. Now the best thing to do is to go ahead and do sudo reboot. And that'll disconnect us from our server temporarily. As it reboots, we should be able to log right back in. Alrighty guys, the system rebooted and now we are actually on the physical server itself. So when you plug in a monitor, this is what you're going to see instead of the command line terminal because now we have a desktop GUI and this is the GNOME desktop interface. So I'm going to click my user account name and I'm going to type in my credentials and we are booted right into Ubuntu server but now it has the GNOME desktop interface. So this is like some basic setup stuff. And this is really cool to see. Uh, these are a lot of the apps you can actually install on, on Linux and Ubuntu, um, which is pretty neat to see because I think a lot of people feel like it's super limited, but this is pretty cool. So I'm gonna hit done for now, but like I said, now we have a desktop interface and this is the GNOME desktop interface. So if you guys aren't super familiar with uh, there's different desktop interfaces. Like I mentioned, there's Mate, uh, Linux Mint. There's a bunch of different interfaces and stuff, but this is the GNOME desktop interface, which is really popular with Ubuntu. So, and it comes pre-installed with a lot of apps too, which some people might discourage this on a server like this, but with our hardware and even lower grade hardware, it runs pretty seamlessly. Now, this might be a little much for something like a Raspberry Pi or something like that, but it's got a lot of apps. You got your web browser, Firefox pre-installed. Um, these are all the office tools. So this is like, if you guys aren't familiar with uh, Linux, this is the Libre Office suite. So it's basically the equivalent of Microsoft Office, which is pretty cool. I mean, I probably won't use it on this server, but it's nice to have. But, and obviously you can still get to the terminal pretty easily. So if you want to go on to the physical box itself and do some stuff in command line, you can do that no problem. This just gives us a lot of options for our server. We have the cockpit service that we can access it through a web browser and do all sorts of stuff through there. And then if we want to actually work on the system itself, we can access the, a nice desktop and do whatever we have to do.
that's going to wrap up this video, guys. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you found it helpful when installing Cockpit. Learned a little bit about Cockpit and the software service that it provides to a Linux based server like this one. And hopefully this gave you a pretty good idea on what the GNOME desktop environment is like. Like I mentioned earlier too, this stuff is kind of optional. You don't necessarily have to run a desktop environment on your server or you don't have to run a SSH client through the web browser like Cockpit. Um, you can just run the plain Ubuntu server that's all from the command line. So that's an option too, but like I mentioned, I am more of a visual person, so I really prefer to have some of those desktop environments, like the GNOME desktop interface. And then if I'm managing the server from a different machine, it's nice to have cockpit because it really gives us a good overview of our system and how it's running. So in the next video, we're gonna be installing our actual hard drives for our RAID configuration. We're gonna have two drives and we're gonna have it in a RAID 1 configuration so one drive is mirroring the other. This will give us good automated redundancy to where we just drag and drop the files onto the server and it automatically is backing it up to another drive. So we're gonna be installing those drives in the next video and we're going to be attaching that storage to the network so we can access it from different machines. So for this build in the network attached storage portion of it, I think we're gonna be using Samba, which is a network attached storage service that can be installed on Ubuntu. And it's pretty commonly installed on Ubuntu. So I did it on a system recently and it seems to work pretty well. It's pretty simple and straightforward. So I think we'll be going with that unless I find something better in the meantime. So make sure to stick around if you guys wanna see that video, which will be coming out pretty soon. If you guys liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more tech related videos like this one, be sure to subscribe. As always, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.